Hey, Kitty Girls, it's Sunday, July 31st, 2022, and welcome to Comes Out Loud Drag Race. It's All Stars Season 7, Episode Number 6 for our little series here, because we are discussing Episodes 11 and 12 of All Stars, All Winners, RuPaul's Drag Race, which was Drag Race Gives Back Variety Extravaganza <clears throat> and the lip sync Lala Perusa Smackdowns. Mm -hmm. The longest titles ever. Oh, <laughs> yes. How do, I don't even know how you fit all, all that in. Well, Twitter did change their count. Anyways. And for those of you that don't know who we are, apologies for the wonkiness of the beginning of the show, but you'll understand soon enough. My name's Gary with my as we have fabulous co-host. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Welcome. Um, and yeah, so we're catching up. We're wrapping up the end of the all winner season. The most infamous, rumored for years, fan requested, mm -hmm. allegedly, uh, show that everybody has wanted to see. I'm just, I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Peeps got opinions. They got oh. opinions on the cast. They got opinions on the judging. They got opinions on the edit. They got opinions about everything, including who won. One. Shit. Get out of the face. Remember so, this? yes. There's that. There's mm -hmm. that. So, um, uh, just so folks know, I happen to have to travel for work to the great city of Chicago in the Midwest. Bitch, I... I'm from Chicago. <laughs> and so I just got back um, on Friday. I actually went to <clears throat> a gay bar uh, in Chicago to watch the airing of the finale. Um, so I'm going to make kind of some references to that. However, uh, we're not going to get into it, but Damon and I in pre-show were talking about the fact that um, they streamed at basically 3 in the morning Eastern, midnight West Coast, and spoiled it overnight for everybody instead of waiting to a traditional airing time. So, right. <clears throat> lots of people already knew who won before Same we bitches. even uh, before I got to see it in a bar full of gays. So there you go. Fucking bitches. I know. But that being said. Right. <laughs> not salty at all. I'm totally him fucking salty about that. Cause it Could just, somebody get this bitch a margarita, please? Right. <laughs> I need to fix some rent. Wait, no. Mm -mm. Not, mm -mm. Too late. Too late. Too late. Too anyway. late. <laughs> Work that tongue, baby. All right. So uh, let's jump into <laughs> the, the first section. You ready? <laughs> Racers, start your engines and may the best legend win. About that best legend winning thing. Anyways, no, 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 no. So we'll, we'll, we'll there you go. get into that. No, no. I. Yeah. Well, let's. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyways. So these are. Uh, this is pedal to the metal. These are our overall thoughts about the episodes. We may have some serves, swerves, or nerves for those of you that don't uh, know. Serves are, you know, finger snaps, way to go, girl. Like, we really appreciate your effort. Swerves are, you got to swerve the hazard in the road. Like, you probably shouldn't have done that. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And then nerve, baby, this could be, like, good or this could be bad. Nerve can be nerve. Like, cannot believe you pulled that off. That is stunting, amazing, hunty. And then there is nerve, which is how the fuck dare you? <laughs> how fucking dare you? Get your shit together. Um, right. So right. that being the case, David, uh, started... I think we've got a lot of things in common as I'm looking at our notes. Uh, uh, maybe. maybe, maybe, but um, um, oh, maybe not. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, we'll see. Anyway. So for my, I'm actually going to give some serves. So okay. my first serve is to, I said all that base. Okay. And that is to Miss Monet Exchange. And during the variety show, she gave us right. a spectacular operatic performance. Mm. Um, and it was, it was funny to me. Um, not funny. It was just very, it was, it was a beautiful song. Sang it very well. Sang it live. FYI. Fuck all the haters on Twitter. She sang it fucking live. Anyway, probably sang it twice live because you know how they are on the show. Um, and 
it just it was so beautiful. It was an amazing show. And for those of us who are singers, you do understand. Even if she is, she was, she may not have had some corseting up here. Like you can kind of tell based on the dress that there wasn't a lot of, um, like cinching and what have you up on the chest area. But there's, she usually wears some kind of waist cincher. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's all she typically wears beyond like you know stockings and stuff. So even with that though, even and especially with operatic voice, you need that deep, those deep breaths to get that. Um, to hold and maintain those notes. So kudos to her for doing this while corseted in our sense, I should say, um, and performing these numbers. It's it's a, It was amazing. It was a beautiful performance. Uh, she looked amazing. I'm not the biggest fan of the Widow's Peak, though, but that's just me. Um, but overall, it was a, a great operatic performance and I'm giving her my like stats for that because it just was beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, I concur. It was, it was a moment to behold. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was interesting. Uh, did you see the pit stop by chance? Yes. Okay. Yes. So Bob, the drag queen has been hosting the pit stop, um, which is the wow, like uh, after show basically. And Thorgy, is the guest and Thorgy plays the violin, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and Thorgy talked about when she was on All Stars, their variety show was the first episode, and they both Bob and, and Thorgy had this little conversation about that. But Thorgy said they told her to bring one violin and to bring a recording, and she was like, "Y'all know I play live, right?" And like, and her whole point is like, oh, I'm supposed to match my movement to the like the track. Like, that's not how this works. It's called live music. And so I thought that was interesting because there was right. I think, kind of a very brief discussion about whether or not Monet sang, quote unquote, mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. had to pre-record. Um, and of course, you know, Monet said that she sang. All the rest of the girls, I don't, I don't want to say the whole cast, but uh, you know, others of the cast were like, uh, "Yeah, she sang." Like, shut the fuck up, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And so, I, I mean, there's a part of me that's like, I'm not really sure how you could do that, other than to possibly do a playback of the first run through. Do you know what I mean? Like, if Monet had to mm -hmm. do it twice, they might have like played back the first one. And basically made her lip sync slash sing along the second time, presuming she could match it exactly. But that's a hell of a that's a hell of an artwork. <laughs> Sorry, performance. real quick, looking down at the um, chat, I'm seeing the words encoding overloaded. Do you see it in the in um? Yeah. What's it called? I don't know if it means anything. I'm just. No, I think we're okay. Okay. I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> this is me, like, I happen to see it, and I don't, you know, you know how it is. I don't want to be like, oh, and here we go, and then we have to do it again. Anyway, but we have we have a fallback if we need to. Having said that, um, um, Swerve. Okay, so speaking of Monet, uh -oh. um, I'm going to give some swerves to the producers and everything that happened in regards to this finale. Before we get to the finale, really. So, spoiler alert, everybody. If you haven't seen the last two episodes, um, this episode, or episode 11, the variety show was worth three Legendary Legend stars. Mm -hmm. So, anyone could win if they won this challenge. So, it all came down to this 11th hour, literally, because it was the 11th episode, um, moment to shine and win. So, guess who wins? Monet and Shay, right? Okay, so that now gives Shay four stars, and it gives Monet five stars. Mm -hmm. They are immediately in the finale, along with Jinx, who has four stars. There are two queens who have three, mm -hmm. and that's Jada and Trinity. Right. 
And, you know, earlier in the episode, they were talking about, like, how would they, what would they do to break this fucking tie if something ever happened or any kind of ties or what go- goes on? Because you, if you do the math, if certain queens win three stars, there's going to be two people in this in one of these spots. Mm-hmm. So it's Jada and uh, Trinity. And the, the Rue asked Monet to break the tie on stage in front of everybody with no time to our knowledge to discuss with any of the queens anything. I That's did, a swing and a miss, girl. I, I, <laughs> I, I did think that was a stunt. Like, yeah. I was like, and I don't think it was stunting pretty for the record. No, it was not. Um, I was like, oh, 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 okay. Right. Suddenly, the queen who has the most stars is given the power to decide who goes on to compete. And, again, no one knows these vague random rules that get pulled out of their asses because it's production. So they can't, like, say, oh, it was in the rules. Like, well, where the fuck are the rules? No one knows this, you know? It doesn't make... It it bothered me enough that I'm I'm commenting on it here. Um, Because that's a weird place to put someone. Now, because up until now, everyone's kind of been, you know, you know, cool. All eight queens have kind of been like, you know, oh, we're, you know, we're sisters or what have you, blah, blah, blah. You know, yes, we knew the star thing. I mean, we had Shay at the start of episode 11 doing the math and realizing that there's not really anything she can do to win. So she was kind of, you know, she wasn't disappointed. She had made her peace with it because she knew, like, as we were getting close to the end. And you've been hearing that throughout this, you know, the past few episodes, especially. And here we are, and now the person who gets to pick the person that goes with them and breaks this tie is somehow the person that has the most stars. Even though that has been something that has not happened at all throughout this whole season. Right. Okay. So I just, I just don't like, I didn't like that. And I don't like it because it essentially puts someone in a weird spot immediately. Mm-hmm. Um, we've had it happen in the past. We know when there's a tie in the lip sync assassin thing that the person who won and was lip syncing against the assassin has to make the deciding vote. But that makes sense because they've technically already made the vote. You know what I mean? Like they were they that that's the whole point. They've been they have to eliminate a queen anyway. Right. So it makes right. sense. Right. This point doesn't make sense. So there's that. Yeah. So that's my that's my yes first. And oh, 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 oh. okay. And I'm gonna give nerve. Wait, wait. I have a feeling I know which direction this is going. I might have a cue for this. What the fuck okay. are you doing? <laughs> You're right. Okay. <laughs> Let me drink some of this tea here. This isn't really tea. This is not dinner. But... Mm. Rue's finale performance dream. So it seems pretty obvious to me that the reason for this this whatever the fuck this was was to give the queens time to change between the 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 two like basically these girls were performing like the 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 different uh, performances so you had the queen of her her she done already had hers is, and then you had the you know queen of all queens those lip syncs so in between now I'm calling Swerve because of several things. First off, um, Bruce Dress. Mm-mm. No, no, ma'am. No, never, ever. Don't ever wear that again. I don't know what Zaldi was thinking. Please take that off immediately. 
Um, you're going to get into more of that later, so we'll, I will leave some of my comments for then. Um, two, it was the oddest fucking transition I have ever seen on Drag Race. They were literally all getting very emotional in this moment. They had all the queens on stage, and they were talking about how gorgeous they were, and blah, blah, blah. And, and then they all leave the stage, and suddenly... Michelle's like, I just had a, I had a dream last night about you and clowns and some bullshit that I can't remember because I'm so fucking over it. And I was just like, what the fuck, what, what the fuck is going on here on this day is where I was with this. Yeah. And then Rue's like, oh, well, you, whatever. I, I, you know what? I'm so pissed off at this moment because it was such a weird fucking transition. Y'all could have had a little time. Something, 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 anything. I don't know. If we wanted to give the queens more time to get ready, that's fine. And if we wanted to do this performance, that's fine. We needed some kind of transition between the super emotional moment them go and and this clown disaster bullshit that was going on. Finally, and this is my biggest point. Where the fuck were the clowns? What do you mean? Where the where the, where the where the where the 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 dancers, the the pit crew or whatever were those supposed to be the 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 clowns? Were they in clown makeup? Yes, they were. Were they? Well, I didn't see it. I didn't you know. Okay, so cool. At least they were in clown makeup. <laughs> Cause and I guess I didn't see it because I was so blinded by the bullshit. Uh, <laughs> well, baby, to be fair, <laughs> this is not like Pagliacci's greatest like performance. So calling back to, to opera and 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 all that. <laughs> um but no they were they were in clown face on stage cuz I watched it again this morning before I left Chicago to come home um and then when they do that ridiculous like scary bit mm -hmm. and they're yeah. standing around Michelle but they're right. not allowed to touch her right cuz whatever um, it just, it, it, yeah, they were, they, they had, they had clown features of makeup. They were not in white face. Okay. That's what I'm missing. Probably because they thought that would be racist. Um, mm, but, that part. but I think, I just think <laughs> that I do, I just, it just, again, it just, uh, this wasn't, like I said, this is nerve. Cause it wasn't just swinging a miss. It was, it was like foul ball out into the crowd that hit somebody in the face like that's mm. that's what this was yeah it was it, it was, just it, was it, it just it was brutal and bad and i oh, <laughs> i'm not like trying to i was searching like did they have clown i don't even know and i i couldn't i mean i couldn't even tell you the song that rue was doing oh, i was called so... smile <laughs> that was a choice <laughs> right it's a bad song I mean that too it's a bad song it was a bad choreo it's mm -hmm. bad lyrics it mm -hmm. was a bad performance right. and then they couched it and bookended it in this dream sequence shit that was just bonkers right so there's a part of me that's like mama I get it you're old and you want to make callbacks to your cable television days when you were in New York and you were doing all this punk shit and how, like, it was cerebral and wacky and weird. Mm hmm I don't think that works currently in, in the streaming slash cable platform very mm -hmm. well. And that's usually when these moments come up that I'm just like, oh, honey, I don't know what you're trying to do, but it's not working. Right. So, yeah. I just it again, like I said, it just really, really 
oh, it it oh, it bothered me so much. And I hate saying stuff like that, but it just it it was enough to make me like, ugh. Mm-hmm. Right. No, I understand. I wish I could find fucking. I want to find pictures. You know what I mean? Like I just want to, like, figure out what it was. Oh, that's cute. Um. Anyway, your turn. <laughs> so uh, I have some serves, um, and I realize that a lot of my stuff is focused on the the last episode. Going back to the variety show, um, I mean the variety show was okay. Mm-hmm. I hate. There to were a lot of it. original numbers. Mm. Yeah, air quotes on original. Um, no, I mean, I uh, nobody blew me away, and so funny. I feel. I mean, well, no, no, no. Like she didn't blow me away. She did exactly what I expected her to do. She hands down, like, knocked it out of the park. Okay. But I already knew that she went to school to be classically trained as an opera singer. So the story did not have an emotional impact on me like everybody else has been making it out. To mm. me. And by everybody, I mean just like what I've been hearing, not necessarily you or whatever. Yeah. But oh, I yeah. was just like, I was like, right. I, it's like it was she had this hidden superpower. And they were like, oh, my God, I didn't know you could do this. Bitch, like, catch the fuck up. Like, she talked about this way back long ago. Like, oh, for God's sakes. <laughs> I mean, it would be like, you know, Trinity doing her number and taking a whole eggplant up her ass. And everybody being like, oh, my God, I didn't know she was a bottom. <laughs> the fuck you been? Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so, yeah. No, I mean, so I, th- I think the, the variety show was good. The one thing I will say about the variety show, um, I mixed on it. So some people thought it was good that the variety show was saved for later in the season because it's traditionally the first episode. I think there was a disservice to, to these contestants because I think they thought it was going to be the first episode. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I don't think some of them prepared very much or mm-hmm. in depth. And it right. kind of showed because if they knew going into it, they weren't going to be eliminated. Mm-hmm. Then they might not have really put that much effort into it. I've been like, oh, I can just turn it. Like, I can just do a little number. You know what I mean? And like mm-hmm, not really mm-hmm. do anything profound, so to speak. But anyways right um there was a lot of like again there was a lot of like lip sync choreographed numbers to songs yeah whether it was their song quote unquote their you know original track like i said before or there were a couple of people that did sing but reality is when you look at it to be honest the people that kind of did something original was uh, Monet and Raja. Right. Yeah. Let me look at my notes. Hold on. I mean, and, and, and right, because um, Jinx always sings. She's a cabaret mm-hmm. singer. Oh. She's a performer. Yeah. Um, yeah. Monet technically can sing. And by that, I mean, like, she could, you know, sing a natural song. It doesn't have to be opera. Um, so that was, like, definitely different. Trinity the Tuck did a dance you know, shock and buck yeah. kind of number. Um, Shea Coulee did like the VMAs on the RuPaul's Drag Race stage. Um, <laughs> honestly, I thought she did really, really good. Yes. Um, she was living the full fantasy. Raja did present something completely different with the the Bali, you know, temple dance number. I was disappointed because in comparison, I felt like a lot of people in a viewing audience would be like, eh. Like it just it just wouldn't have the same impact. Um, I don't know if it was Alaska, maybe, on Race Chaser podcast, said that she actually watched videos of, and there's a video out there apparently on YouTube comparing, like, side by side of Raja doing the exact same temple dance mm-hmm. as a Bali dancer and how pretty close to accurate Raja got it. Mm-hmm. And and so that made me feel better about it. But at the same time, I'm like, yeah, but people don't usually get impressed by that. Like, they want to see pussy splats, like, you know, so that's a, <laughs> another issue. Um, yeah. Evie, uh, according to Willem, did the whole performance twice, and it was the first time that she did it that caused Rue to say, is she going to break her back or something like that? Right. Because there was concern about her physical safety, mm-hmm. um, because apparently when she did the back bend onto her head or her shoulders or whatever, like that didn't quite... She landed wrong or... 
Right. Yeah, she talked about it. She talked about it on her Twitter. Let me see if I can find it real quick. So that was a concern with AV. Um, Jada did a classic. I recorded a number, and I'm gonna dance like around with it, kind of thing. Um, and then the the Vivian. This is sad. I can't remember what she did. I mean, she, she sang. She right. did the. Um, um, oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. So you want to talk about a, a swing and a miss? Viv has a Diane Warren song. For those mm-hmm. that know who Diane Warren is, she's like one of the most like well known uh, songwriters in Hollywood. You pay a pretty penny for a Diane Warren song, so this is supposed to be a big fucking deal. The song's pretty good, but like they portrayed it like Diane Warren wrote it for the Viv. And I was like, mm, more like Diane Warren Warren wrote it in the shower on a Sunday and it was up for sale and you paid for it. And this isn't a dig on the Vivian and it's not a dig on, on Diane Warren. It's just the fact of the matter. She does this shit all the time, nonstop. Like it's she's a machine. Mm-hmm. She just does it. So like they kind of made it seem like a big deal. And I was like, mm, I don't no yeah this seems like yeah. the, like we're we're threading a needle to to get it to go a certain way for authenticity yeah. but anyway so for for evie just kind of the she posted this on the 24th of july and i'm just reading something from her i'm assuming this is from instagram that she posted on twitter um she said the last quote the last backflip i ever landed was after mustering up enough energy to go full out for rehearsal however the last one I ever attempted was for the first taping of my performance. I had even less energy to spare and landed on my neck slash shoulder slash head in front of the RuPaul, RuPaul. So at least I had the pleasure of giving her a heart attack. I spent a lot. Uh, mm, I don't need to read the rest of this. Sorry, <laughs> but that's what I mean. So like, which I think is what Willem referenced that the video yes. clip that we saw that very moment was actually the dress rehearsal, not yeah, the actual performance, which which looked pretty seamless to be honest in terms mm-hmm. of editing. You couldn't quite tell the difference, but it does make sense, especially in the Lala Perusa lip sync. Evie did not go all out. At one point, mm-hmm. she's on the ground, and when she goes to get up, she notably gets up like most queens would get up off the floor. Mm-hmm. And that stood out to me mm-hmm. because we already knew that she was hurting, and she had talked right. about that like in right. the Tic Tac, you know, interview lunch thing. And right, I mean, she's right, she right. been pretty honest about the fact that her medical condition is causing her to not be able to do what she used to do. Correct. So. Yeah. Um, so anyways, uh, for me, uh, serves to jump into it. Jada beating mm. mama. Mm. Like I'm that about dress. to have goosebumps now just thinking about that dress. First of all, she don't weigh very much. She a twig. Like, so baby, like she must have some good stamina and some muscle tone about her because that that dress has to weigh, what, 60, 70, 80 fucking pounds. Something. So, but it, she looked stunning. Ning. Like, if I ever saw her in person, she was wearing that. Like, I'd be fishing around. I'd be like, did I pack a 20? Like, because, like, <laughs> yes. it cost a mint. It looks gorgeous. It's, it's, it's yeah. absolutely what is needed and, for this. And even moment. if she made it herself, like, I don't know for sure if she did, but she does make a lot of her own stuff. Mm. So it's possible that she made it herself. And if that's the case, honey. Right, 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 right. Um, in addition to that, Evie's camp cake look. <laughs> While I didn't think it was the thing that was needed for this moment, I still wanted to give recognition for it because she came out as a goddamn three-tiered cake with, like, hoop skirt, like, layer levels and caster wheels. right. Like, I mean, it was just, it was so Eevee, and I was so tickled pink by it. With the hair as the frosting. Yes, like, yes, yes, yes. I mean, it was it was uh, the epitome of, of, so I very much appreciated it. Um, tons of effort on her part. Um, you know, she's the queen of the queerdos. We'll talk about that later. Um... <laughs> That's okay, because I'm about to, I'm about to, uh, this is going to be appropriate in a second. We all have choices. 
some of us make the wrong one. So let's talk about Monet. Uh oh. Monet, Monet, Monet. This is a swerve. Uh oh. This is several swerves. And mm. because I didn't have the time, I don't have the vi- the visual proof. But um, where's my this one? I've had it officially. Monet, get your shit together when you're putting an outfit on. I have officially reached my limit with seeing your breast padding, your undergarments, like anything in your decolletage, in your area, in your cleavage. I am constantly seeing a bra. I am constantly seeing like whatever you're using to pad yourself. I'm seeing the little class buckling of your bra shit. Either wear the outfit right with a proper undergarment, so just don't fucking wear it. It's the all winner season. All winners. This isn't your original season. Swerve. Actually, it's almost nerve. I'm so pissed off about it. Your tone seems very pointed right now. Because it fuck it is. I can't get over. <laughs> And that's the problem. We're in HD. So, like, she wears her promo look from her season. And I'm like, obviously, that is a brown bra. Like, and that is the clasp. I can see it right here fully. Like, I'm trying to undress you. I can see it. I should not be seeing that. And ever, and, and it happened all season long. And the fact that we made it to the finale and it was happening was driving me crazy. I was like, it's bad enough we're in Untucked and they have a side view and I can see, clearly see your boob and I can see whatever you're using as your form. And it's not a match. It looks awkward. Like she, It's <laughs> like she's oblivious to how this looks from different angles. Right. So, yes. I often, I'm going to, sorry, I'm, I'm going to, because I remember seeing that. And it says, pull down and look, I'm on the, you know, wonderful Drag Race Wiki, Impulse Drag Race Wiki. Because I feel like. I just, I just think she's oblivious to to side angles and Mm. deeper cuts on outfits and how that works. I'm like, I I don't know what to tell you, girl, but it looks bad, in my opinion. Right. If I'm supposed to see the undergarments, then I really should be seeing the undergarments. Otherwise, I shouldn't be seeing them. Like, the outfit should Fair. be covering it up. The undergarment is there as support and structure to give you the look. Not to detract from it, which is what's happening for me visually. I'm like, what the, what the fuck are you doing? Anyways. Um, mm. I'm also going to give a swear for Viv's blush. In the finale episode, I felt it was a bit heavy. Like, it was it was big it went like clear up to her eyes and it felt it was heavy color wise mm-hmm. and i just didn't think it was yeah. necessary i mean you it mean was, for the it finale was, look yeah, yeah, yeah like in yeah. the finale well i mean she didn't really change her makeup between her runway and her lip mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. most of them didn't yeah um, yeah so it was just i mean it was like you're really bordering on high whore drag like yeah. sunday brunch high whore kind of drag that so, like isn't refined and that was bugging the shit out of me yeah one of the things i noticed about her um, was a, well, not really. I was little, little, slightly miffed because of the. Um, there was a lot of color, like a lot of color on her eye, for this all black outfit. But when you look at the pictures that she put up on Twitter, probably Instagram as well, it's much more muted, and I like that better. Mm. It just works better. Yeah. But there was a lot of color. And I agree with you. Like, there was this, like, this area here, and I'm pointing kind of from, like, my temple to, like, the app, past the apple of my cheek right. for, for our listening audience. And all of this was, like, blush. And then on top of it was a very iridescent, mm-hmm. like, pink purple highlighter. Yeah. And it was, a lot. <laughs> it was it was a lot. I mean, you had the contour line, you had the cut cheek. I mean, it was just like it was and and Viv has amazing like face Makeup. painting yeah. talent and right. it just drove me nuts. And um in addition to the Viv, the final runway choice. Boot girl. You mean the the the, the black outfit. Oh, you didn't like it? Not for the finale. Mm. Not for your very last visual representation. She says, well, I went with something very girly, 
for my season, blah, blah, blah. I wanted something that was different. Oh, you got different, girl. You look like a black feather duster. It doesn't really, it didn't do anything for me. It didn't really wow me. Mm -hmm. The outfit she wore on UK season was astounding. I wish they'd been reversed because I think that one would have been better for this. But anyways, so I'm just full of criticism, obviously. And then we've got Nerve. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hold on. I haven't looked at this. Give me a second. So I messaged Damon when I'm watching the show. I'm in the bar and I messaged Damon directly oh. about this very thing. Let me see. Let me pull it up fast if I can find it. Because <laughs> that was like, mm -mm. oh, in all capital letters, how many Muppets died for that outfit? <laughs> This is Mama Roo's. I said Mama Roo murdered a Muppet. This is Mama Roo's finale, like episode look. Yeah. Now I don't, I don't have such a strong distaste for it that I think Zaldi should be fired. I just, <laughs> I know you do. I know you do. I just wasn't a fan of it. I the the teal aqua corset like that it was, was my issue. There, there's and and the asymmetrical like I mean the 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 material was mm -hmm. really intriguing to me and i think there could be more better things done with it mm -hmm. but also mama okay so I, this is this is very complicated for me mama Roo looked good and not good the outfit mm -hmm. was 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 giving me itchies because i just couldn't figure <laughs> out if i liked it if i hated it or what the story was the corset was a slight problem and then on top of it, I'm already thinking about Muppets, and she is wearing this wig that makes her look like Big Bird. She looks like Big Bird's head. It's this big, huge, round, golden yellow wig. It looks like Big Bird's head. But I will say this. Give the award to the makeup artist that it better have been Raven because that rainbow look mm -hmm. on her around her eyes with the colored mm -hmm. rhinestones mm -hmm. i could not stop looking at that that right was astounding i had to keep looking at her else i was gonna i had to focus on something right because right, that right, outfit right, right, was right, right. was no i agree yeah it was it was just uh it was something it so, just caught me it, it oh anyway so yeah nerve not in a good way i was like this, mm -hmm. this, this not a good thing you know, uh, but then also I do have nerve as we wrap up the section. Raja's runway for the finale. Mm. She came out on the stage. I'm in the bar and I started getting goosebumps because I was like this, this, this is kind of the like the Phoenix ultimate. I mean, it could probably have been better, but like she delivered in a finale episode of Girl. what Raja does. And right. her voiceover was pitch perfect. It's aquatic. It's alien. It's insect. It's like all these, like, you know, kind of fever dream things put together. She right. wore colored contacts. I mean, like, she used her own she hair. Did, she didn't just wear colored contacts. Right. She wore colored contacts with the black sclera. Yeah. Like, I was. And I'm so mad because the RuPaul's Drag Race wiki, all of the finale looks you can't look at right now because oh. I don't think the image is there yet. It's kind of pissing me off because I really, I wanted to like look at that because everything was amazing. Yeah. No, it was, it was, she really is like the, in this season, like, serving fashion nonstop. Mm -hmm. Like Shay absolutely serves fashion, but Shay I think is serving editorialized fashion. Right. Where Raja is serving more artistic, like pushing it kind of like fashion. Um so yeah, I, I definitely fashion. I <laughs> is it fashion? It's um, fashion. <laughs> is it fashion? <laughs> if you don't understand that inside joke and it's not from our show <laughs> Go watch it too. God bless Peppermint. Love you, Peppermint. Um, <laughs> um, 
so yeah like the, so some swerves some nerves and uh some serves it was it was definitely a mm -hmm. whole bunch of different stuff are you ready to move on <laughs> sorry i was i was i i went to Raz's um wiki page to look up the to try to find the outfit and i'm still fucking in awe of her all glowed up look girl oh. anyway move we can move on okay okay <laughs> All right, it is time for snaps and eye rolls, the hits and the misses, a.k.a. the highs and the lows of these episodes. So, Damon, who are you giving snaps to? I am giving motherfucking snaps to Jada Essence Hall. Word. Like, okay, so I don't... There's So, I love Jada on her season. Mm -hmm. Love her. I have seen so much of a change in her in the less than what two years since then. Right. It has been amazing. And her on this season has been a combination of just emotions and laughter and joy. Mm -hmm. And I know she, you know, we we she she didn't win. But she won, in my mind. She, she gave, yeah. She really is the epitome of a good time gal. Right. But when I say that, I feel like a lot of queens make reference to, like, a girl that can party. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I don't think of it that way. When I say it now, I think of Jada as, like, the person you want to hang with. Like, right. the person that is fun, no mm -hmm. matter what is the circumstance, and will even, uh -huh. like, make fun of the shit when the shit is happening. Yes, like, I was to lighten yeah. the mood. Yes, I was just in awe of everything she did. I was cracking my ass up during. I think it was Untucked. Let me pull my thing. Yes, yeah. So it was during Untucked when she was just like, "So you remember when we had that conversation and you told me you'd give me twenty five thousand dollars if you won?" Like I was like, "Girl, <laughs> you are still trying to get that coin, honey." She was, she was just like pulling at everything and it just made me laugh and you know what she was such a doll and so just amazing throughout this season and 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 on top of all of it like she was never shy to show emotion mm -hmm. you know the crying the laughing the the she wasn't you know we never really got like quote-unquote anger in her but like these like from the get-go like i think from the fucking first fucking episode yeah like we've gotten all this thing because she, you know, she has told us, I believe the story that she was telling us was that because of how her how she won and how her season went, she didn't get the opportunities that a lot of the queens had and hasn't gotten those opportunities because she's a COVID queen, um, mm -hmm. ultimately. And that has taken a bit of a toll on her. Um, I think, you yeah. know, she, she was, when, we, when she came into it, she was kind of saying she didn't feel like she deserved it to, to, to be there and all of this stuff. And I was just like, no, honey, you deserve to be here. Right. You were one of the, if not the most beautiful lights on this show that I had. Right. Because it was so wonderful to see you. Cause you, like you said, she was the epitome of fun well and, and, and i think that was that's the thing i love about her is like i think the air around her is just better right right she's just i mean like just a terrific person and she is a queen i wish because she was actually here for pride um i wish i had gotten an opportunity to see her mm -hmm. i was tired though that probably wore me the fuck out but um <laughs> Um, uh, I, I want to see her live. Yeah. No, I, I want to see, I would, I would honestly love to like meet her. I would do a meet and greet with her in a second because there's something I feel that is, is she has a essence 
about her that draws you in. Yes. It makes you just feel really good. Yes. See your trip. See your trip is what I wrote down. Because I'm just like, that is, that is, that is her. So, yeah. My snaps are to Miss Yada. Yes. I concur. What about you, Mr. Gaddy? Um, so I want to give snaps. Um, so this is going to seem a little strange because it was strange. So we get to the finale episode. RuPaul comes in the room and all the queens are like, yay, we've made it to the end. Mm-hmm. You can even tell by their body language how relaxed they are. They're like, mm-hmm. this is it. It's the final lap. Like, we only have these couple of things left to do, and we pack our shit up, and we get the hell out of here, and we go back to our lives. And so they're very casual. Mm -hmm. Like, I was paying attention, and their body language was just so, like, easy breezy. It's Mm -hmm. cool. It's good. And then RuPaul pulls this stunt with production and says, all right, we're going to do quick drag. And... They and they left it in for the edit, and Raja is like, "Wait, wait, wait! Do I have? I think I have a a thing for this somewhere here." Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> she didn't say that, but she was feeling that moment because she was like, "Wait, excuse me, we're doing what? We are mm-hmm. not doing this." And I don't know what happened in the edit because it seems like a minute or two or a couple of minutes went by because then we jumped to her revealing that they're going to do the Soul Train number that has yeah. been done before. Mm-hmm. And it's just it's just kiki. It's yeah. just kookiness. It's just fun. Mm-hmm. So they have this Soul Train silliness number, and I have to give props to Trinity for pulling out this stunt – <laughs> that she never revealed the whole season. She has this bouffant wig with all these curlers. And I'm sorry, it's well crafted. Mm-hmm. And she looks boo boo the fool. And she is dancing and suddenly pulls open this trap door in the front of her wig and grabs a can of like gotta be glue hairspray, pulls it out, puts the hair back up and is just dancing with the hairspray. And like, you know, a bunch of the girls kind of lost their mind. I did. Yeah. I was like, that, was... that is, that is a stunt. And it yes. was funny. So it was super hilarious. Um, I not related to this, but like a while back, I had watched a video of a woman basically creating that kind of wig. Mm. It, it wasn't; it was more Elizabethan than it was like curlers and shit. But it was like a super curly bouffant wig that was like up really high, and it had a trapdoor. And I just i i i i love the idea behind it, and I was surprised surprised to see it. Um, on Drag Race, and not only that, but to see like Miss Trinity pull that shit out, and I was like, "Girl, like that—that that is." It just goes mm. to show that she is she is not one to, to right on. Like she she is she is a queen of queens to perform uh-huh. and to see. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it was. Yeah. So, anyways, I just had to give snaps for that because I just thought mm-hmm. that was I thought that was amazing. It, it it really tickled me to no end. I was like, right. God bless Trinity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so it's time for the eye rolls. Dana. So I'm going to say this, and it's a little surprising for me. Um, we're going to talk later, and I'm going to have a lot to say there. Okay. So I have nothing to eye roll right now. What I will say, though, is pay attention to what I talk about when we get to our last segment. Yeah, so for those of you that are regular uh, listeners and viewers, we added a new segment just because it's the last episode um, for this. Uh, and we'll get to that in a second. So uh, for me, for eye rolls, um, I've got actually, what, three or four. <laughs> so I'll make it up for, for David not having any. Um, the new titles from the judges, that's the first thing I got eye rolls for. <laughs> You've got eight contestants, and they all have to be, like, knighted or queened or whatever this crap is. Everybody's got to have a new title. Why? Mm-hmm. Why? Why? It was a dumbass production move. I hated it. I didn't like it at all. 
because they needed to do something because it's all winners. Because they edited out the negative judges critiques? That part. So for those of you that uh, as clarity, that was not, it's the truth. The Queens have come forward and said, Oh no, we got negative critiques all season long. Right. They have edited them out on purpose. Yeah. yeah. Which I that really is, feel like world of wonder. I'm hoping is learning a lesson. Don't do that shit again. Cause like, everybody's like the fuck. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Right. 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 Um, so there was that, um, production picks. So, I'm calling shenanigans on how production kind of handled some things. You and I discussed this before in a prediction about the Twinners having to compete against each other. Mm -hmm. um, I really feel that the last two episodes were highly planned, executed on a production side of things. And I feel like the Queens knew, but kind of didn't know. Like, I think they kind of didn't know at first. And then I think some of them really started to figure it out and put it together. Right. So let's just be because let's just, because I yeah. think their attitude changed, and I think the way they kind of handled themselves changed a little bit. Um. Because I I do think that Shay thought going into episode eleven, mm -hmm. this is it. And then mm -hmm. when the three stars thing comes up, it's like oh she could potentially like win to be in the top four. Right. But I also feel like Shay had kind of checked out. Possibly. Because I don't feel like she really gave it her all in the Lala Perusa. So mm. there's that. Because mm. I think because I think the writing was on the wall as to who was gonna win. Mm. And that I don't care for a whole lot. And the production picks for who got she done already had hers as like runner up, quote unquote. I don't know what we're calling that position. They get the fifty thousand dollars and the scepter. They all got scepters. Well, right. They they all got scepters, but they all got so okay. But the she already done had hers as didn't get a crown. Correct. And I was under the impression they also were going to get a crown. They just weren't going to get as nice as of a crown. They were going to get a smaller crown. They were going to get like a little baby crown, maybe. You know, that was my impression. They were going to get a crown and money and a scepter. And it said they got a scepter and they got money and they get no crown. At least that's my understanding. And I was like, uh, okay. And maybe the concept is because she already done had hers. Is she doesn't need another crown. But Raja infamously still has her shitty ass stupid like prom night crowned that has already fallen apart. It is in basically pieces. Like it was for one of the very earliest seasons. And mm -hmm. they didn't really, it wasn't from fierce drag drools. It wasn't a very good crown. Like anybody could buy a replica of it. I mean, it was wanted. cute, but it was, you know, that's it. Right. But you know, if anyone who knows like drag race jewelry or drag, not drag race, drag jewelry or anything along those lines, you know, that shit <clears throat> was probably a, a, really cheaply made maybe not cheaply made but it was not so well made quick like probably bought it from you know right. china or something and it was just like one of those like it's i mean it was pretty and it probably was pretty you know 20 years ago when they had it up so <laughs> not so much now yeah so <clears throat> um i just feel like that so i have eye rolls for the production picks like just kind of i feel like the fingerprints are all over episode 11 and episode 12. um and then lastly you already commented on it uh <laughs> eye rolls for that music video quote unquote nightmare right it was just boot it was just bad just, just it just good. Yeah. it just wasn't yeah i don't who 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 signed off on that and who put Rue in there? <laughs> who decided, like, Rue, you're going to do this? I don't know. Somebody did Rue do that? Or did Rue just go along? I think Rue went along. I think she kind of probably in the moment thought it was fun. Maybe she'd taken an edible. I, I'm not sure what the, what the story is. Girl. But yeah. infamously, Rue apparently also is like, you get it and you get it now because I am done up because we ain't doing this again later. Right. There was probably one episode. There was probably one take. Right, right, right. And it, so it was like, this, this is it. So, yeah. Boop. 
We're so done. yeah. Um, uh oh. It was it was just not good. It was it was mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. not good. Uh, so you ready to move on to our last and final? Yes. Thing for this portion of the series. Okay. All right, honey, we're calling it Crown It. It is the end. These are our final thoughts on season seven, all stars, all winners, RuPaul's Drag Race, because it is it is done. It is in the books. We are we now have a queen of all queens and a queen. She already done had horses. Yes. And a fuck ton of money given away in a season. So, yeah. Right. So go ahead. You've 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 you've. <laughs> You've got things to say, apparently. I, I have edged you all long enough with this shit. So Buckle here we up, go. kids. So I have originally put this as my eye rolls, mm-hmm. but I am gonna. I when I saw that this was the the ending and we were gonna do this thing, um, I put it down here. Right. And the thing I put down is called lowered expectations, and I'm gonna talk about that. So here we go. Um. As I mentioned and mentioned in pre-show, um, I was spoiled on the um, winner of the season at 7 a.m., about 7 a.m. on Friday morning. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew who won. And when I found out, as I mentioned, I was kind of pissed. I was pissed because of the, the fact that I was spoiled. Right. But then another like level kind of hit. Because knowing that she won, I kind of knew immediately how everything played out. Mm, okay. Everything. Um, knowing that she won and no, and I got spoiled on both winners. I'll put okay. it like that. So, so I went into the episode with a lowered sense of watching it if that makes sense i didn't feel i I went into the finale with a like well here we are this is it like blah 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 like cool i get to watch it honestly to be blunt the main reason i probably watched the whole thing was because jim was here and because i had to do this show because i had already been spoiled on everything Mm. like i already knew how it was gonna go and that's my overall issue with this whole shenanigans. And here's why. We did not get any critiques, anything negative throughout the whole season. So ultimately, it came down to, well, how well can you do? And we are giving lip syncs to queens that to be blunt, like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'm just gonna, let me just throw all this out here, I'll pull my buck out and I'll show you like what I wrote down. So, <sighs> Queen of C done already had hers is. Mm-hmm. Lands on Vivian. Mm-hmm. They, they apparently spin it again. And again, somehow, even though there's only four people on this, it lands on someone else. I want you to understand that. Like, statistically, probability, what have you, it's possible, but not nearly as possible. Mm. So I don't know how many times I spun that wheel. Or did it land on someone? We know how it goes. We know this shit. We know everything's kind of rigged. There's the riggery of a lot of things. So immediately it's going to go her and Evie. And then... The song that they get. There are two songs in these things. And you have to figure it out. Like I'm looking here. It was either push it or let's hear it for the boy. Two old drag songs. While they are staples 
in like drag performances, they are older staples. Mm-hmm. Um, Push It kind of lands more into Evie's range mm-hmm. because of her background and her uh, ability. She's a rapper. We know this stuff. Vivian did not have a chance. Mm. Moving on. So now we have do it for like let's hear it for the boy. Who do you think between Raja and uh Jada, Jada is going to win that number? The girl who's probably younger than the song itself are the one are the person who probably performed that song 15, 20 dozen times. Granted, Raja is not the greatest performer. I'm going to call that T right now. Raja has said she is not a modern drag queen as like, you know, she's mm-hmm. not a twirler. She's mm-hmm. not, you know, the the diva with the dancing toes. Right. I mean, you know, she said, I'm a lounge act. Mm-hmm. You know, she and plus she's very um, cerebral. So, like, right. there's this amazing video online, if you can see it. Um, I don't think I know if I shared it with you, Damon, where she does this Hindi number mm. where she has all these arms. Right. So, like, there are two arms are hers and there are two other sets of arms that are not hers. Oh. And she looks like a Hindi goddess. It's 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 good. Yeah. It's Got an it. older Got video. It. It's definitely from, like, the 90s like Got or the it. early Got aughts. It. But it's like that's what I mean is, like, so Raja is not – a modern queen, quote unquote. So yeah. you're not wrong to say she's not necessarily the best in terms of performance, quote unquote, mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. comparison to someone that, you know, can do pussy splats and, you know, back bends and, you know, mm-hmm. all that kind of jazz. Right. Um, and at the same time, like, it, it was kind of sort of unfair. Yeah. Like when you're talking about the age thing, I'm like, right. Yeah. Because that was the first thing I picked up on as well. I was like, oh, how interesting that the older songs appear to be available to meet an older queen. Mm hmm. Because they didn't have to do that. They could have gone with all contemporary new stuff. Mm hmm. They could have also like, pulled random shit out. Like, right. we started the season with one of the best lip syncs ever and then kind of never went back to it. Right. Right. So, and then we go into, I'm just, you know, and then the final for them too, for the Queen of Daria is that they did, sisters are doing it for themselves. Another old song. And I'm sorry, I am sorry to keep saying it that way, but that's the way I feel about it. Mm -hmm. It feels like these songs were intentionally chosen to sabotage newer queens. So Jada, Evie, the Vivian, you know, some you know, it just kind of one of these things. Like it, it, it just felt that way. Um, moving on to the finale. Before you go there, can I tell you something about what happened in the bar? Do it. So, I keep moving back. I'm sorry. <laughs> Raja wins the first round. Mm-hmm. People are cool with it. And then we get to Raja versus Evie. Mm-hmm. The crowd was split at the bar. Mm. People yeah. literally booed out loud at the screens that Raja won. I mean, who wouldn't? I'm, I, so I, 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 haven't, I haven't had a chance to really watch the, 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 the lip sync again, but I... I, I I love Raja. Yeah. I think she's an amazing fashionista. She's an amazing like queen. She does she's got the makeup on point. She looks amazing. Yada 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 yada. When it comes down to a lip sync smackdown for the crowns, mm-hmm. I did not expect Raja to win. Well, I knew Raja was going to win when RuPaul said, and I would have prepared the audio clip if I had it ready. Based on your performance tonight and all season, the winner of, 
She mm-hmm. already dad had, she already done had hers is, is the moment Ruth said those exact words. I was like, Oh, it's going to Raja because notably you said all season. Right. Not just this lip sync. Right. So that's, that's the moment I knew Raja won because I'm like, well, in comparison, mm-hmm. like, yeah, Raja has not been 100% all the time. But if you had to kind of compare her to Evie, I think it's a, I think it's a little bit above. Like, I think mm-hmm. I think there is a distinct difference enough. Not a lot. Not, you know, 100% better, but just mm-hmm. like. Five percent, ten percent, whatever you want to say, it's enough to make it better. Plus, the wig stunt. Right. So when it happened, when when it started sliding, like when they show it in the video, like for about a second, I was like, "Oh dear," mm-hmm. and then I was like, "Nope, oh, this, this is a, this is a gag. This is a gag. Yeah. Evie would never do this." Right. And Evie's fucking bald. Right. So Evie wouldn't wear a bald cap. <laughs> she doesn't need to wear a bald cap. She super she glues that shit to her head. Or well, she's, a not, staple she's gun. not bald anymore. I think she still has some hair. I'd have to look at anyway. But I get what you mean. But right. I, so, I get what so, you mean. So that like was it. so that was a stunt, and I mm-hmm. felt like this was sort of a indication that stunts don't make you win, which we've yeah. always kind of known that. But the crowd likes a stunt. Mm-hmm. Hence, yeah. I think the crowd at the bar was split 50-50 yeah. or 60-40. There was yeah. notably a whole bunch of people. Like, there was one twink, honey. She was – she. I was like, I'm on this, like, rail level, they call it. Like, it's, you know, kind of a high bar um, area down uh, – the dance floor or whatever area is kind of down below. And this one twink was like, boo! I mean, he's, like, thumbs down again. Like, you know, he is just not happy. He is it. not happy yet. No, no, no. <laughs> like, he no. was making it known he was not happy about but he wasn't uh-huh. the only person that booed and i was just like yeah. it, i was sitting there and i was like whoa like and it's funny because as i've said earlier this season raja 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 i really do like raja so i yeah. was in the camp of hoping she would do well mm-hmm. i think she did okay All right right that's the, agreed and and that i feel that way too yeah <sighs> And I was happy to see that she was on the show. Yeah. Really was. Yeah. Genuinely was. But it just, I did not expect, when when they said that the finale is a lip sync, SmackDown, Lala, Perusa, whatever kind of thing, I was like, okay, well, good luck. Correct. <laughs> you know, because looking at this cast of queens, it's been a while yeah. for you, you know, Raja. So, and you had a really, you have a very memorable lip sync from your season. We all have mm-hmm. seen it. But again, that was some years ago. 13 years ago. Mm-hmm. And you have grown and, you know, as a person. And we 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 know who you we know a bit of who you are. We know you're a fashion, you know, and you were and you still are like a fashion icon. Yeah. And I'm I'm you know, I was so loving everything like fashion wise that you did on the show. I feel you got robbed in that episode with your gold shit. Like I'm just calling it what it is. So having said all that, then we get to the the Queen of All Queens thing. I knew immediately. Knowing again, knowing who won when Jinx was like they landed on Jinx. I was like, well, whoever she's up against is gone. Right. Like you know this, and of course it happened to be Shay. And I'm just like, how? How did Jinx Monsoon out lip sync? Shay Coule. How? Well, she did. She did, apparently. No, I think she did. Oh, okay. Because remember, I'm in the bar, and so this drag queen host asks who they're who oh, yeah. they think is gonna win overall. And they know who the top four are. 
<laughs> so when they say Shay's name and the crowd does not react, mm. I was mm-hmm. shook. I was shook. I would be shook too. I am in sidetrack. I am in the neighborhood of Chicago. I am surrounded by queerdos. I am in the home of Shea Coulee. I am in the city that loves her, or at least I thought. I was so <laughs> confused. I was like, I, I expected the crowd to go at Wild. least a little something for Shay, if not nuts. It wasn't crickets, but baby, it was embarrassing. Only like two queens applauded. And the place mm-hmm. is like not super packed, but it's like at least 150 yeah. people. I was like, <gasps> Ooh, girl. No. And that was the second name that was said. And when the third name was said and everybody was being kind of quiet, I was like, the fuck is going on around here? And then when the bar lit up when Jinx's name was said, mm-hmm. I sat there and I was like, oh, she won. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm OK. I'm like, yeah. this is fucked up. Like, yeah, it just it that, bothers that the me. crowd already knew who won. Right. And that's kind of why they were acting the way they were. Now, I did have a brief moment where I thought, well, technically, Jinx has kind of been slaying all season and she is a force mm-hmm. to be reckoned with. Fair. And you know what? And I'm going to put it like this. And I'll again, I'll kind of wrap up. I'm not going to talk about all the other things. I already know how it goes. We knew that they were going to put um, we knew we were going to put Monet and, and, and Trinity together we knew that because yeah. one of them had to reign supreme we had to break the twinners curse or whatever you want to call it and one of them had to become at the winner and this is going to sound salty and i'm going to say but i am going to say it i feel production felt that jinx technically won or jinx won because she won if you put the numbers in front of everyone, anyone watching this show, it feels proper for Jinx to win the end. Even though it was a lip sync, smackdown, shut up, whatever, fuck you, it was given, given her success this season. I mean, I can understand that. So looking at the at the stats, she had four pins. Monet had five. Mm-hmm. But the reason Monet had five is because she got three mm-hmm. at one time. Right. Now, Jinx had been blocked twice. Mm-hmm. So that actually means she could have theoretically had six pins. Mm-hmm. And Monet was blocked once. So even if you give her the three, she also would have had six. But then Jinx had five total wins and Monet had three. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So and that's, like, that's like they of... were they were pretty competitive. Yeah. And that's kind of where I'm at with it. Like it felt very clear. If you had not had this Lala Perusa SmackDown, whatever kind of thing, right. Jinx was the clear winner. Like, based on numbers, based on whatever, anything you put in front of it, Jinx slayed this season. Yeah. And that's where, again, kind of getting back to to wrap up my point. I am feeling very just eh about this season, this, this finale. I felt that this wasn't necessary. And it became... More of a let's put in one episode because we need to do 12. Like, I hate saying it like that, but it just felt that way. We had all of this stuff, this riggery. I, I'm literally calling it riggery because it feels that way based on how they do it, did it. We had this wheel that we never, ever, ever see the back of. Right, and this wheel, for those of you that are that maybe have never seen the regular season, it's been used several times now. And there's been shenanigans called on it every single time mm-hmm. that it could be manipulated remotely or mm-hmm. from behind or whatever. And so mm-hmm. there's no real potential of randomization. Like, if you're really mm-hmm. going to do tra- true randomization, where's the, where's the bingo ball handler? Like, where's... Yeah. 
where's something that kind of gives you a much better feeling of it? Like we even called shenanigans on the last season with the damn chocolate bars. So yeah. you just really feel yeah. like because just... it is a reality show, they just can't let go. Mm hmm. And and that's where it's coming to me where I we've been doing this for a long time and it just feels like now, especially production is involved so heavily that it's not really based on talent. Now, don't get me wrong. There was a lot of wonderful talent and there's always been, you know, in these seasons and these queens are amazing and I never want to knock anyone's abilities. Mm -hmm. But the fact that we didn't get any critiques, negative critiques, the fact that it was, it was edited out purposefully to make all of these girls look good. Yeah. And then the fact that we get to the end and the two queens who won are the two people who have been on, who have been in the show the longest. It just adds up to too much going on. Yeah. When we're doing a lip sync, like SmackDown, and we're doing a lip sync SmackDown, and the lip sync assassins that have been called assassins don't win, that says something to you. Right. Now, to go back to your earlier point about um, Shea Cooley not winning, having watched the lip sync twice now, I kind of agree with Bob's assessment in Pit Stop that, or was it Thorgy? One of them said that Shay was trying so hard to do the Lady Gaga choreography mm -hmm. that it didn't translate well. Mm -hmm. I also wasn't a fan of her outfit. Like, girl, you look like the rubber chicken that got run over trying to cross After the road. After a long night of hooking. Okay. <laughs> But no, it just yeah, like I, it just. I, like, I mean, it, like the the coat thing. So that was very confusing to me because it thought it was going to be revealed, but it wasn't. Um, but it also seemed to be inside out. I want you to go back and watch it. I want everybody listening or watching to go back and watch that lip sync. Shay is on there. She's wearing this ridiculous coat, like it's black and white check, like a race flag, and she takes it off and she throws it backstage. And I swear. It was on Inside Out because I swear there's like four inch long fur or something of the black and white check pattern on the inside. And all I kept thinking is, why was that not on the outside? That's so strange. Like, yeah. I just didn't quite understand. And she did seem to be flailing a lot, like not yeah. negatively, but I like just... she was really doing choreo. And I was like, and the moment I knew what the song was and I was like, well, this is probably going to go to Jinx. Like I kind of already knew Jinx was going to win, but like this, that even cemented it further because Jinx looked the part for the song Judas. Mm -hmm. And like I'm looking at this. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at her outfit again and I'm like, Oh honey. And I'm just, it wasn't kind of, fur. It was, looks like it was ruffles. I or... just kind of wonder if Shay knew what the gig was. I just kind of wonder if the, if the queen started figuring it out during these smackdowns who was expected to win mm -hmm. and they were holding back mm. and they really weren't giving it their all. Right. Now unfortunately, like, I think Evie just physically couldn't do it. Mm, maybe, yeah. But I just I'm I just, just <sighs> yeah, I'm just very Yeah, I'll say it. I'm kind of disappointed. Nothing in these lip syncs to me was jaw dropping, like amazing. Wow. For a lip sync finale, Lala Peru is a smackdown for the crowd. I think I got all the words in there. Um, I, even though, yeah, granted, it wasn't on, it was on like the, the regular stage, it wasn't in like a theater and all of that shit. It just didn't feel. Like, this is the finale of All Stars, All Winners right. season. And and I think you're dead on, Damon, on that point. Had they done the finale like they do a regular season on a stage in a theater with a live crowd, I, I just think they would have amped it up to the level it really should be at. What yeah. I guess what's embarrassing to me is knowing that national pageant finales 
have better production performances than what we got. It's fact. You're right. Mm -hmm. It's fact. The mm -hmm. fact that Entertainer of the Year, EOY, mm -hmm. has better performances out of their finale contestants than these queens. Yeah. It, you know, and, th and that's really what's becoming the problem for World of Wonder. Yes, they are a behemoth. Yes, they have taken over the world, but they are not all that there is of drag. And if mm -hmm. you take the time and you get to know some of the rest of the drag world that's out there and these different things, you can assess and be like, you know what? There's a lot of talent that is not being given the time on television. Mm -hmm. and, and, and part of it is because it is a very fuddled thing. It is, it is not possible to put everything on TV. But you do what you can with that as it happens and, you know, determine uh, what to do and how to go about it. So, yeah. You okay over there? You're muted. I literally had, I had a bug, like, fly, like, right here. Like, it hit... My eye, oh, and God. then I got it, and it landed down, and I hit it, and I was like, "Okay, well, I need to clean this up, but I'm not, I'm not, I can't do it right now." Okay. So it's just like sitting here. <laughs> well, rest in peace, little bug. Um, How about you, Gary? Because I, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I have several thoughts, but I'll, I'll try to keep them pretty succinct. Um, this is my feeling on it. Uh, well, that happened. Mm hmm. And I think that parallels a lot of what you were just saying. Like, I think, I think the weirdest thing is how the finale aired and rolled out and like the way it was produced, it just feels disappointing. And mm -hmm. yet I'm very happy for the winners. I mean, I'm happy for all these contestants. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just feel like I wanted more from them, but I also wanted better of production. So true. Um, also an interesting untucked and tucked this entire season has been very interesting because mm -hmm. there's no eliminations there really isn't drama like none of this you know like plus the angstiness of it of a first time season for a lot of queens is, like can become very grating right. and none of that was there this really turned into rupaul's best friend race um it was very family it was very nice a lot of the uh guest judges came back and talked to them which was nice um the games were kind of okay uh, yeah. But this Untucked was very interesting to me because they got to see the elders perform mm -hmm. kind of like the lip sync Smackdown before. And then I was surprised that they were surprised that they all got to sit on the sideline to watch the very last lip sync mm -hmm. for the win. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Um, so I kind of liked Untucked this season. I didn't know there was going to be an untucked for the last episode. I mean, it, there should be, but because I was in a bar, um, that was the other thing I wanted to talk about. So in a bar, typically when there's an airing, when it comes to commercial time, they go away from what's being aired. And there's like, if there's a, if there's a host, then the drag queen plays games, does shots, like, you know, engages mm -hmm. trivia with the, the crowd, something to keep them entertained. They only did that once at Sidetrack, and then, um, and because it was already pre-streamed, they showed the non-ad version, so they just... Right, right, like, right, okay. The first break, they did a little game thing. They did a little game thing a little bit later on, but every time there was a break, it was like, bloop, like they just kept trucking. So that was a little <laughs> weird to me, because I was used to going to a different bar in Columbus uh, earlier this year, in which I got to see them air it, and whenever the commercials came on, they cut away the televisions, and they turned the DJ music back on like it was a regular bar for like three to five minutes, which allowed wow. people to go to the bathroom, get another drink, and then come back and re-engage. So it was very interesting to me to see two different types of like airings of of the series oh, but the way that aired the finale was different for mm -hmm. me. um and plus you know like you'd ever see untucked like if there is an untucked most of the bars nobody ever really seems to play it or show it which i thought was strange um mm. and then lastly um our prediction on the final showdown so we got it wrong 
Yeah. We're not going to be hired anytime soon to help predict mm-hmm. like politics and who's going to win a race. No, no. Um, I honestly had not predicted the three star concept mm-hmm. to shake things up to possibly move somebody up on purpose to right. be in the top four. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just think it was overall, again, I'll put it like this. And, and this, you know, we know this. It made for good television. Did it? I don't know which fan to grab. <laughs> grab both. <laughs> grab both and just be like. <laughs> shady facts. Ma, shady facts. It just, it just, again, it kind of goes to show you, you know, it became this clutch moment and it gave the queen, I don't want to say gave them hope. It just gave them the opportunity. But you know what? Kind of, you kind of said something earlier that caught me. You know, typically they do the variety show at the beginning. It's like the, you know, big thing. They always, we always have done it. So they did it at the end. And Bob and, Thorgy were talking about how they liked they were talking but they didn't say they liked it but they <laughs> felt like okay here it is at the, at the end they kind of prefer it at the beginning because you get to kind of show everything off since this was at the end it felt I, I don't like saying lackluster because I did enjoy it but I think I agree with you either it was one of two things either we know how the the variety shows have worked in the past. No queen has usually ever gone home. That or no, that's not true. No, that's not true. So, um, a queen does get normally eliminated, but that was under like regular all stars kind of rules. This was different. This was going to be different. Right. I don't. I don't know if the queens knew that no one was getting eliminated. I have a feeling that they did. My understanding is they negotiated that. Right. That the queens refused to come back if they were going to be heavily, nastily critiqued and if they were going to um, okay. be eliminated. Got it. So, so given that. That's what I've been told. Given that, it feels like the talent show wasn't as big a deal. Fair. Right. So we got, like we talked about earlier, a bunch of like. These are my songs. I'm lip syncing slash, you know, dancing, whatever, with with a choreographed number with these dancers behind me. May, I don't like calling them pit crew because I don't really see them all that often. I just, but whatever. Um, so here we are doing this thing, and most of the queens kind of do that. And it just felt very lackluster in that sense. But because of it, and because of being the end, but it now being worth three stars, it feels like, oh shit. Like now I have to really do something, right? but I can't really do something because I didn't plan to do something because this is what I brought for my talent show. Right. Now, I don't think they, I don't know if they brought all the props and shit. I highly doubt they did, but, um, cause that's a lot of stuff to put in luggage. Um, but uh, I wonder if there was talk beforehand about it, right. you know. And my understanding is is that they were given a budget this time. Okay. Um, apparently, they did it on the UK season two, possibly seasons one and two. They give the queens budgets for looks because um, Willem has been heavily critical of World of Wonder for many many years about how they operate things, and has said, "Give the girls money." Because that's really what is needed now. It is so not fair to have these girls on here and expect them to just have money available. Right. Now, I think she says it more for the all-star seasons than the regular seasons mm-hmm. uh, because you're asking them to come back. So my understanding is that they did get paid something, some money ahead of time so that they could have looks and blah, blah, blah. And production was involved, I think, in signing off on a lot of things that they did perform and what they chose to do. So I think production also helped build those sets and, and different stuff. Right. But also still that kind of shows like I think the seriousness they gave the variety show because look at what Evie did. Evie had no backdrop, no, no nothing other than a big ass trunk. Mm-hmm. And, and a performer. 
Right, and both Trinity and Jada had whole fucking like production backdrops. sets, <laughs> right? Backdrops and set props pieces. and stuff. Right, set pieces. Uh-huh. Um, uh, Shay had one set piece. Like, yeah, like it, it was definitely kind of all over the place. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah, I'm not really sure. Who knows? Yeah, but again, it 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 goes to show you that things have gotten. I don't like saying bigger, but production is very heavily involved now. Yeah. And that is good and bad. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it, I feel so conflicted because you and I have been watching since the very beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, this is episode 145 for COL Drag Race. Um, so we've done many, 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 many seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, I think since seven, was it either seven or eight? I think season seven was the first season that we did this together. You and I, um, I mean, we discussed the other shows, those other seasons, but like between each other. And then I was like, Hey, why don't we do this thing? So we've been doing this over the years. So it's been se- season, I think seven through 14 plus all the all-stars. Right. Um, and I've seen uh, most of everything that's us based. I've even like watched all of drag U. Um, I did not see the first celebrity show. Mm. Now we've got a new one. And honestly, my, my gut reaction was like, oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, <laughs> I might watch it. In fact, I know me. I will probably watch it. We're not mm-hmm. currently planning to recap and discuss it. Correct. Um, I think that remains to be seen. Mm. Because rumor has it that they're stealing the masked singer concept. For this season. And the criticism from a lot of people is, how the fuck you not going to know who the celebrity is? Because <laughs> they're in drag. And drag doesn't change you that much that you aren't going to be recognized. Right. Right. So that's I where mean... I'm holding out just a little bit that I think we might discuss it. But I don't, I don't we're not going to do an episode by episode thing. I think if we do it, depending on how many episodes there are. I think it would be kind of funny to check in <laughs> and just talk <laughs> about the show in general Understood. and how it's going right? and what that is. So stay tuned, patrons, audience, listeners, and viewers. You just don't know what's going to happen. Uh, season 15, right, is, God. I know, is the next season that's up. I have not really heard anything about it, but I imagine it's not going to air until next year. Mm -hmm. especially since we've got a celebrity drag race thing kind of happening in a couple weeks here in August. And so that'll probably go for two months. That'll take us into mid October. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm hoping we'll get that the whole world will get a break because like, there's so much going on. Like France is airing right now, which I don't care about. Um, And and this is, this is my problem. I would be more invested in the universe overall of of RuPaul's drag race. If they weren't, doing this Venn diagram shit where they're overlapping things. And now it just looks like a fucked up kaleidoscope because we've got the international stuff and we've got the all stars thing and the regular stuff. And we've got the celebrity thing. Like it's like, they just can't help themselves. And I get it. It's entertainment and it's a cash grab. And that's the part that annoys me. I'm like, uh, always uh, will. Yeah. Mm. So anyways, uh, we will see how the schedule goes. You never know who's going to, tune in and, and chat with us and who knows maybe we'll just do a fun little like one-off episode or something with a a friend that we know that's a fan as well just to discuss the the whole franchise and and different things um without it actually being about an actual episode um mm-hmm. and i know somebody who knows someone who could possibly get us a guest of a rue girl i've just never really kind of oh like asked to play that card oh <laughs> someone had offered to me and said hey you know i know so and so i could probably get them to, to be on the show and i just never really called that in because i don't like to do that but understood but they've been away they've been away for a while now and we're both we'll fans i think of this person and i think it would be fun to have them on <laughs> so we'll we'll see i don't know i realize it was a horrible tease but you know that being said, 
<laughs> For those of you that couldn't see what Damon just did, that was a very naughty finger gesture. Um, <clears throat> if you would like to get in touch with us, there are several ways to do it. You can go to our blog, comesoutloud.com. You can send us an email, comesoutloud at gmail.com. Give us a give us your thoughts tell us what you think do you agree or disagree with us um, on these last couple of episodes for the whole season you could also call us at 361 col talk that's 361 six sorry 265-8255 uh and you can leave us a voicemail message we would be happy to play it on another episode or just listen to it and discuss it um Maybe we'll do an all-feedback episode. Who knows? Uh, if you'd like to get in touch with us, you can pretty much find us on most social media outlets, uh, old-school ones, I guess I should say. YouTube, Twitter, uh, and Facebook, because we are not on the Tiki Talks, because uh, we old. Uh, <laughs> and if you want to join our chat, uh, we have a chat group over on Telegram. It's tinyurl.com backslash Telegram uh, hyphen C-O-L-D-R. You can also uh, see when the regular series is going to be recording its stuff, uh, when it's going to be live. And that's at tinyurl.com backslash calendar hyphen C-O-L. Speaking of which, if you would like to support us, there are several ways to do it. You can, one, become a patron over at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. And for a dollar or more, a repeating subscription every month, you get uh, extra things. The biggest thing is that we bookend our episodes. We have a pre-show and a post-show. Um, and as a patron, you get to listen and or watch all of it. You can also buy our merch. You can go to zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud and get various items um you can get homeware items we have lovely things like these mugs that damon and i are holding up i happen to have this um kind of etched glass style uh which reminds me of beach glass and it has the our cubs out loud drag race logo on the front and the cubs out loud uh kind of banner logo on the back but damon has the same thing only his is what's called two-tone so it's white with a matching interior and handle his hand happens to be pink um, but I think blue and gray are the other ones. But um, there's purses. There's all sorts of things with the logo on it, um, as well as apparel. And today, in honor of Monet and Trinity Unplanned, Damon and I are being twinners. We're wearing the Consent is My Foreplay t-shirt that we um, had as a part of the design series from Smashy. Um, it happens to say Consent is My Foreplay. It has the crown as well as the blue pink. 